My name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley and in this video I'm going to talk about my 5th UX design internship with Waymo. Good morning everyone, time flies. We are already at the last episode of this internship series. Thank you for all the supporting along the way and today we're going to talk about my 5th my last UX design internship with Waymo in summer 2018. Remember that cute little koala car? Now they spun out from Google X and became an independent company under Alphabet called Waymo. If you live around South Bay, you will see them driving around the neighborhood by themselves. Magical. Just to give you some timeline context, I graduated from Georgia Tech and decided to go for a graduate program at Art Center, which was a two-year program focusing on designing with emerging technologies. And this internship took place in summer 2018, in between the two-year graduate program. Here are my three takeaways from this offer. Number one, make more designer friends. Number two, take tips and instructions seriously. And number three, keep two refined UX projects in your portfolio. Let's dive right in. Number one, make more designer friends. First of all, everyone needs friends. I've never seen anybody be like, I'm so sad because I have so many friends. It's more like the other way around. If you can connect with someone, why just for that singular work-related connection? Why not more than that? Beyond work, somebody to grab lunch with, somebody to share travel stories with, or somebody to share life experience with. You get the idea. Maybe you will think, oh, I don't have time for everyone. It makes me feel awkward and uncomfortable. But why not just try it? Go with the flow and see how it goes. Once you see the value, the benefits, and the fun of it, maybe you will start to agree and appreciate more. I'm here to simply share my story and maybe you will see the value in it. I used to be more closed off and guarded, but then I had some realizations as I was stumbling and learning along the way. During that internship, I went to a Bay Area UX designer meetup dinner thing. It sounded a little intimidating at first because I found out I would be spending two hours having dinner with 30 plus people that I had no idea who they were. But maybe that's the comfort zone that I need to step out of. And I was like, don't overthink, it's gonna be fine, nothing to stress about. So I went ahead. During this event, I met a UX designer from Google and I found out I already connected with him on LinkedIn. And another fun fact, I was in the process of reaching out to him and already have drafted an intro message. And I was like, that's great, I see you in person. So I'm just gonna say hi and ask all the questions that I had in mind right here, right now. Then we exchanged contacts so that I can ask him for more advice. And we also chatted about some random things here and there. Fast forward one year later, we got to know each other more as we share quite a lot of design philosophies and life experiences. And I would say we became real friends. I invited him to lunch when I was interning at Pinterest, at Zynga, and he invited me to his housewarming party. I would say we really got to connect, which I'm very grateful for. If you're watching, thank you for being a great friend. We knew each other fairly well, and this is when the magic begins to happen. In spring 2018, Waymo was hiring a UX design intern, and I found out the hiring manager used to work with my friend that I met at the UX dinner. What a small but beautifully serendipitous and connected world. To make this world even smaller, the hiring manager and I were actually both at my friend's housewarming party. Now you really see how things can become really random but magical. A connection from three years ago has evolved so much. My friend helps send an intro email to connect me with the hiring manager so that I can ask some questions on what the internship is about, what the intern will be doing, and what are they looking for, and etc. Of course, I applied for the internship, but I did not tell my friend about it. The intro email had helped a lot, so I don't want to be pushy and ask him to keep checking with the hiring manager. In the end, I got the internship, and I found out some interesting behind-the-scenes stories. 
Apparently, the hiring manager had a chat with my friend, and he said some nice things about my design work, my attitude, and my work ethics, and etc., which was enormously helpful for the application. It really boosted the hiring manager's confidence that I could be a good candidate. I had absolutely no idea about the chat. My friend only helped me with the intro email. Since I didn't tell him that I apply, he didn't know about it when they had that conversation. But that's exactly how things can work. Organically turn out. My friend upvoted me in front of the hiring manager, and since they knew each other, the hiring manager trusted his recommendation. All of this magic stemmed from me going to that uncomfortable UX designer dinner and making a good designer friend. In hindsight, the dinner was fairly casual, and it was so worth going. Number two, take tips and instructions seriously. Sometimes after you apply for an internship or a job, the recruiter or the hiring manager will leave you notes or tips. I would rather say to help you prepare your work, presentation, or upcoming interviews. If you ever get any, first, congratulations because you're really lucky. Ninety-eight percent of the places that I applied to never gave me any prep tips. Second, congrats again because you actually have a better shot with those tips. After I applied to the internship, a recruiter got back to me with some notes of what to expect and what to prepare for the upcoming interviews. When I got the email, I was like, "Dude, this is amazing!" I was so psyched because this is just like giving you a peek at the final exam questions. Then all you have to do is to find all the answers before the exam, so you can ace the test and start your spring break early. You might wonder why would a company disclose information like this? Would that make the interview really easy? That's a very good question, and here's why. First, hiring is really hard. Companies spend thousands of dollars trying to hire the right people. That's why LinkedIn and Indeed exist. Their products are not very sexy, to be honest. But these companies make loads of money. A company wants to hire, and you want to be hired. Then why not just both parties put some effort at the beginning to simplify the entire hiring process? A company tells you specifically what they are looking for and what to prepare, and you just prepare it. My previous design manager actually wrote a medium article on this particular subject, and I highly recommend reading. Link in the description. Second, humans are lazy. Face it, and to be honest, I am, and I can be lazy from time to time. Even all candidates are given the same prep tips. I'm pretty sure not all of them will really take the time to look over them and do their homework. Sucks for them, but wonderful for you. If you're willing to spend time on it, you'll be way ahead of them, putting yourself to the front of the race. And let's be real: if you really want it, show that you want it by preparing for it. If you really want the latest iPhone, you will work your butt off. Get extra jobs, additional shift, save money for it, right? I really want to go to the Taylor Swift concert. So I flew from California to Houston just for the concert. No shame. Do I really want an internship over the summer with exciting future technologies, self-driving car industry leader Waymo? Hell yeah! So I spent hours looking at the tips, gathering my thoughts, preparing my answers, writing them down on paper, and reading them out loud over and over and over and over. Number three. Keep two refined UX projects in your portfolio. I have covered how to create thorough UX projects in the past. If you have not already watched them, check them out. Link up here, down in the description, and also at the end of this video. In this tip, I want to share something new and interesting that I learned along the way. It's okay to present the same projects if they are thorough and polished. The two UX design projects I have in my portfolio. Even as today, remain the same two projects that I did back in 2015. What a surprise, right? I did both the shower faucet and idea journaling app back in 2015. When I was interviewing with Pinterest, those are the two projects that I presented. When I was interviewing with Waymo in summer 2018, I presented the exact same projects. Crazy, right? How likely is it that I presented the same projects for three years in a row, and still be able to get a new offer? Let's break it down. It's not as crazy as it sounds, and in fact, it's quite logical. Number one, those are big projects. Each took at least six weeks in class. Time doesn't always equate to quality, but if you don't spend enough time on a project, 
it's likely that it's not going to be very thorough, not very polished, and not refined enough for you to present or include in your portfolio. With those being six week projects, I can afford to create enough content, enough quality to get them into a thorough position during my class time in school. Number two, then I'm pretty sure I spent extra time outside of class, extra personal time on those projects in 2015, 16, 17, and 18 to add more information, graphs, animations, etc. here and there because there's always something to improve upon. I'm the type of person that I will get some new ideas for my portfolio when I'm wandering around on the street. Then I will just rush home and get that on my website before I go to bed. You don't have to be that extreme, but maybe you want to jot down those ideas and work on those over morning coffee at Starbucks over the weekends. As you know, the design process is very iterative. Your portfolio by definition is a huge design project, so it should also be iterative and something that you polish over time. To give you something more practical and actionable to work on, I compiled the list of things that I have done in the past and maybe you can apply to polish your projects. Do you need to re-render the title image or hero shot? Is it in low resolution? Do you spot any flaws in the image? Do you need to re-render some product shots? Maybe you thought of a better angle, better color background? Or if you got some new inspirations when you were browsing Pinterest? Do you need UI animations? Maybe you realize some UI animation can really help sell your idea? Then go ahead and make one. Do you need to cut some of the user research? Did you include too much detail on research? Try to reduce that to about half of the browser height or maybe the length of two images. Do you need new graphs? Were your graphs and charts confusing in a way? Then think of a better way to show it, then redraw it. Do you need to rewrite a copy? any spelling or grammar errors. Make sure the description is concise and clear. Keep it short because people don't read. Do you need to change the layout and arrangement of a project? Make sure the content flows well. Try the mom test. Ask your mom to scroll through your project once and see if she gets the story that you're trying to tell. Do you need to tweak or even make new prototypes? You think the visual design of the prototype can be a lot better? You just don't have time to work on it in class? Then keep working on it, keep polishing it. Having a thorough project is a must. Beyond that, you also want to refine them, relentlessly, rigorously refine them, polish them over and over and over. That's something I learned. You don't always need new UX projects, especially if you like your old projects and they're solid to begin with then you can keep polishing them and representing them in your future interviews. All right guys, that concludes my fifth, my last UX design internship with Waymo. And the three key ingredients to this offer are make more designer friends, take tips and instructions seriously, and keep two refined UX projects in your portfolio. With that said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you find some useful and valuable information in this video. If so, transcend the like button down below for that awesome blue to show up. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel. This will help motivate me so much in producing more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you in the next video. Cheers.